What if you were to make that kind of a list for your life? What you need out of a life well lived, what you want, what you're willing to accept, and deal breakers. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing innovators in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces. I also bring you ideas and techniques that you can grab and use to set goals, create, and unlock your potential for changing yourself and the world. And now let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Today I want to talk about something that I've been doing a lot of thinking about. I'm a life coach. I help people figure out career moves and uh, relationship moves and how to figure out the stuff of, of what they're doing in their lives to make the best life they can. And one of the things that I've done, or actually two of the things that I've done, I figured out and created a step-by-step process where you can really identify for yourself, for example, your dream career. What is, especially if you're one of these people, and I'm like that too, I have been in the past, where you don't really know what you wanna do. You have glimmers, you have thoughts, but things you try don't seem to work out, or you don't feel like you are uh, accomplished enough at the thing you wanna do, whatever it is, there are all sorts of ways and all sorts of reasons that may keep you from getting to your dream career, from getting to work it. Some of that might be practical things like you don't have the right degree, so you can't be an accountant until you have gotten some sort of a degree, a CPA or something like that. You can't be a lawyer, a practicing lawyer, unless you've gone through law school and passed the bar you see what I mean, right? So that's that's what I'm talking about. Those are practical considerations and I get it. But what about before that? What about when you're trying to figure out exactly what your career can be, might be, or even should be, but you're kind of flailing around a little bit. You're not in a place where you know exactly how to bring that career to you or how to bring yourself to that career so that you are able to, to, to live and work feeling joyful, happy, abundant, well compensated, and thrilled to be doing the work you're doing. So I developed this, this uh, technique, if you would, if you would like, uh, called your dream career, discover and achieve your dream career. And it's about sort of manifesting, figuring out for yourself what it is that you want to do, and then manifesting it as part of what you do. And so in thinking about it, for example, I can go, okay, manifest your ideal career choice. And so I, I will ask you, please write the following down on this form. Everything you need to feel you have a fulfilling, exciting, well-compensated position, and you make it as detailed as possible. And then you say, okay, everything you want in a great job, these are the characteristics that you desire, and they can be as big as as you want, because they don't have to be a part of it, but would be really great if they were. And then what are you willing to accept? What are you willing to accept in a career? It's a list of characteristics that would not be the greatest, but if the previous two are satisfied, you're willing to take that as part of the next job. And then there are deal breakers, right? Too little money, moving to another country. It's a, for me, it would be a smoking office. If it's, if, if they allow smoking in the office in any way, shape or form, I can't, I couldn't work there. And then it's, it's sort of drawing that to you and figuring out what your energy and focus needs to be so that you actually draw the opportunity for yourself to you to be able to embark on that career. And I did the same thing for my clients when it comes to love. Imagine going through and figuring out what you need in a partner, what you want in a partner, what you're willing to accept in a partner, and deal breakers. And let me let me talk about that for a second. I did I did this for myself many years ago, which is how I know it works. So I went through and I made a, an exhaustive, comprehensive list of what I need in a partner. Some of the characteristics were I needed someone who loves animals, ideally someone who is vegan, 
at the very least, vegetarian, but vegan would be way preferable. And someone who was kind and someone who made me laugh. I, I love to laugh and I need someone in my life who makes me laugh. That's for sure. And so I, I that, that was, those were needs. Then I wanted, I wanted someone who looked like Harrison Ford. Luckily, I got someone who looks like Harrison Ford in my life. But the point is, no, I wanted someone who wanted to see the world or was well-traveled, even better. Uh, I wanted someone who had kind of an international flavor to their lives. And that was very important to me. And because I'm an immigrant, I wanted to have that as well in my partner, someone who has seen some of the world, which is phenomenal to me. And then... What is it that I'm willing to accept? Okay, I'm not the neatest person in the world. And would I want my partner to be more neat than I am, as in tidy? Yes. <laughs> but that was not the case. Uh, no, but I'm willing to accept someone who's less than tidy. For sure, I'm willing to accept that. And that was on my accept list. And then what are my deal breakers? Smokers are deal breakers for me because I'm allergic. Someone who would be unwilling to deal with my scent sensitivities. I couldn't be with someone who's like, well, I don't care. I'm just going to, you know, that, that, that breaks the kindness one for sure. But, but it's, it's a challenge, right? How do we do that in a way that feels substantive and good? We have to do it in a way that feels really good. And that is something that we can do if we do it together, right? And so it got me thinking about life. Getting those two done got me thinking about life. And what do I mean by that? What if you were to make that kind of a list for your life? What you need out of a life well lived, what you want, what you're willing to accept, and deal breakers. And it's not just work, because work can't, can't be all of it. For example, I need animals in my life. I, I, as much as possible, to feel like I'm living a full life, I need my cats. <laughs> I, need to, I need to feel like I'm either working with animals or on their behalf. I need to have pets in my life. I don't think I could live again. I, I didn't have pets uh, the first 20 years of my life, and now I don't know what I would do without them. So that's a need. That's that kind of companionship with animals is a real need for me. Uh, I, I want to have uh, enough money to travel. That is a real want for me. Is it a need need? No, I don't think it's a need. I don't think it's, you know, if I didn't have enough money to, to go places, I think I'd be okay. So I want money to travel. Uh, I want to live in New York City. Do I need to live in New York City? Actually, I probably do if I'm being super honest. I, I love this city so much and I've wanted to live here since my family immigrated. When, when our plane was flying into JFK Airport, the first time I saw the Manhattan skyline, I went, oh, this is magic. And I was seven and I wanted to live in New York City and it only took me 45 years, right? I, I wanted to live in New York City so much that at at one point <laughs> I went, okay, honey, you don't have to move to New York, but I have to. And so he went, well, I guess we're moving to New York. And that's what happened. We moved to New York City and I I love I love this city and everything about it. Well, and 99% <laughs> about it. I don't love the fact that somebody stole our catalytic converter a couple of weeks ago. And that's but that's happening everywhere. It turns out, by the way, if you have an original catalytic converter, it's worth about $600 on the open market. So if you still have your original catalytic converter, talk to your mechanic about getting some protection for your catalytic converter, because it turns out it takes them like 90 seconds to jack up your car, get under it, saw through the pipes that uh, that hold the catalytic converter in place and take off with it. And they've made a cool $600. And the aftermarket ones, if you get an aftermarket one, when you replace your catalytic converter, they will only net them $30. So apparently they don't go after those, according to my mechanic. Why am I talking about this? I'm talking about it because, yeah, that that's one of the things that I don't love so much about living in New York City. But again, it's happening all over the place where there are catalytic cars with catalytic converters. They're being stolen. So take care of your catalytic converter as much as possible and, and consider buying one of those old style clubs for your steering wheel if you've got an airbag. Why? Because they're stealing those too. Yay. 
Uh, I know, I know this is a silly thing to talk about when I'm talking about living your ideal life, but those are the, those are the trade-offs, right? In order to live in my ideal city, I'm having to take extra precautions and that's what I'm doing. Those are the trade-offs. I get to live in my ideal place, but there are things that I have to accept. I'm willing to accept that sometimes people are going to steal from me and it sucks. Don't get me wrong but it's something I'm willing to accept. So you have to develop this little grid for yourself about your ideal life. What are you willing to accept? Are you willing to accept feeling a little bit less settled? You know, do you want a nomadic life? Do you want a partner for life? Or maybe you really don't. Do you know you want children? Or maybe you really don't. What are those things that are going to make up your ideal life? Write them down. What you need, what you want, what you're willing to accept, and what you absolutely will never accept. What is the deal breaker? And I want to talk more about this. I just wanted to put this out there because if you do that, if you write out two copies of that, get in touch with me and I will get you the ceremony you do to put things in place on a universal level to start drawing that ideal life to you. Now, do you still have to do the work? Absolutely. But this is a manifestation technique, and it I can't tell you how many times it's worked for careers and for love relationships for my coaching clients. Can't tell you how many times it's worked. And this is what I do with my clients. You know, I work with them to develop the essentially the grid for what their ideal life would be. And then we come up with the strategies and the tactics to make sure they achieve it right? That's what, that's the point. And so this is the very first part. I'm giving you the very, very first part of developing the roadmap to your ideal and I I really, and realized life. And if you have questions about that, drop me a line. And uh, if you ever want to get a coaching session around some of this, you can always contact me. I'm going to put the, uh, my, my calendar scheduler in the show notes to this because if you, if you do, if you're like, you know what, I really am ready to, to develop my process and my strategies for getting my ideal life together. I really am ready. I want to try this. You can make an appointment. We can do a coaching session and I can see about getting you on your way. All right. I'll put the show notes together. You'll have all of that in there. And, uh, yeah. And, and this is right around the holidays. So give yourself a really cool holiday gift if you want to do that. Uh, do this for yourself. Figure out what your ideal, realized, actualized life would be. All right. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. This is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast. And by the way, this is innovative. Sitting down and coming up with this, this grid for yourself, this list, it's innovative. Most of us do not take the time to figure out, am I living my good, good, great ideal life or am I not? And if I'm not, what can I do what, what could I be doing right now to make it closer to my ideal? Well, first, you have to identify what that ideal is. And let me tell you something, that is innovation right there. It's figuring out the problem. Maybe my, my, maybe my life isn't ideal. And then coming up with an ingenious solution to it. And these are the first steps. This, by the way, has been one of my uh, in-the-car episodes. You've probably heard cars whizzing by. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you decide to see if you can grab a coaching call with me, that would be fantastic. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2022. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind.